Greetings and welcome to today's devotion, which is the last in the series this week, where we've been meditating on Romans chapter 16, celebrating co-workers uh, in ministry. We have seen Paul appreciated and celebrated his co-workers in ministry, a characteristic that is important for all of us in church ministry. So today we close by looking at the last paragraph of this chapter, which indeed is the last paragraph of the letter of Paul to the Romans. And that is Romans chapter 16, verse 25 to 27. And allow me to read it. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith, to the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. This benediction or doxology is the longest found in Paul's epistles. And it starts with, now to him who is able to establish you. That's one end. And it ends with, to the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. In between, the summary of the gospel of Christ in evangelizing the nations, which has been his running theme in this letter. So I'd like us to focus on the two bookends, the beginning and also the end of this benediction. So the beginning, it says, God who establishes his people. So Paul writes, glory be to him who is able to establish you. Other verses uh, put it that glory be to him. Uh, my version says, not to him who is able. But what Paul is saying here is that the gospel which God has given him, which he wrote in chapter 1, verse 16 of Romans, that it is God's power to save, is also God's power to establish Christians in the work of salvation. It is through God's power that we are saved. It is through God's power that we are established. And established here means nurturing. Nurturing, especially new converts, as well as strengthening young converts, but also strengthening young churches uh, that are growing up. And as co-workers, the power to be saved and grow spiritually as an individual is from God through the gospel of Christ. And God uses our abilities and gifts and willingness to serve, to establish us spiritually, making us strong in faith so that we can stand against error, making us uphold holiness so that we can stand against temptation and also granting us courage so that we can stand against persecution. It is God through the gospel of Christ who grants us his co-workers the power to disciple other believers. Yesterday we talked about Paul and Timothy. It is God who only can equip us to do that. And that we do by believing rightly. And we saw that when Paul warned us about false teachers to be vigilant and also ministering to others in a loving and faithful way. And it's by God's power through us co-workers that a caring church is established, one that cares for the family of believers, growing their faith through demonstrating Christ-like attitude and exhibiting genuine love to believers as well as non-believers so that they can also come and join the fellowship. So the first uh, focus, the first book end at the beginning is God who establishes his people. And we talk about the only wise God. And the second point is that God is alone wise and glorious. And this is verse 27. God is alone wise and glorious. And 
This is Paul's conclusion of this great letter, epistle to the Romans. He concludes in praise of God's wisdom. And we know that God is all wise, that he's all powerful, he's all glorious. But also we have seen God's wisdom in Christ himself. Because the Bible tells us in Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures and wisdom and knowledge. So Christ showed us God's wisdom. In the cross of Christ, which uh, is foolishness to those who are perishing, but is the wisdom of God. Again, God there showed his wisdom. God again shows his wisdom in the emerging multiracial, multicultural church during Paul's days and even today. During Paul's days, it encompassed both Jews and Gentiles, all peoples from all nations, tribes, and languages. And that has gone on today. And as we saw, that will be how the church will be. That is God's wisdom. We also see God's wisdom in his purpose to unite everything under Christ. Everything will be under Christ. So indeed, as God's redeemed people, we will spend eternity ascribing to him praise, glory, wisdom, thanks, honor, power, and strength. That is, we will worship him for his power and wisdom displayed in saving us. Friend, are you going to be one in this multitude worshiping the all-wise God in heaven? If not, how are you planning to spend eternity? God's wisdom has brought us salvation so that you and I must not suffer eternal condemnation, but rather eternal life with Christ Jesus. Believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will be saved and redeemed for eternity. And this is the best reward one can get in serving God here on earth. As a co-worker, you may be serving God in the different areas, in your church and in ministry. And you may even feel that you are not appreciated or you're not recognized. But let me assure you, God has seen what you have done. God recognizes what you have done. God will reward you for what you have done here on earth. And better still, and most important, by granting you and I eternal life in heaven. And so do not be discouraged. Rather, be encouraged in your service to the Lord. Because it's for God's glory alone that we can ascribe all the success in our doings as workers of Christ through the wisdom of God and through his sovereignty. So brother, sister, as a co-worker, continue serving the Lord for the reward is eternal. Let us pray. Always glorious Father, we thank you for your mercy in our lives, calling us to your salvation and service. Praise, glory, and wisdom, and thanks, and honor, and power, and strength be to you, our God, forever and ever. Amen.